Hey Tank family, it's Matt and we're back with another Tank Talk. Hey, have you ever wanted to learn something new? Maybe an instrument or a sport or a new dance on TikTok? Whatever it was, you probably thought you'd just practice a few times and then boom, you'd have it down, right? Well, if you're anything like me, the reality of actually learning a new skill isn't that easy. For years growing up, I tried to learn how to snowboard. I've never been the most coordinated on any kind of board, but usually I can figure stuff out. But growing up, my brother and I would get lessons and while I struggled and struggled and struggled, the little snot just picked it up so quick and he started zipping around like no problem. After a while, it just wasn't fun for me anymore. And I remember on our 10th outing, I counted, our 10th outing of me sucking up snow on the mountain as my face fell over and over and over again, I was done. My brother kept going, he's really good now, I kinda hate him, but I was just never good enough. Maybe you can relate. Even if what you were trying to learn or do was different, if you struggled with it, then you know that feeling that I'm talking about. You know what it feels like to not think that you're enough. And for a lot of us, when we feel like we're not enough, it feels really personal. At some point, I'm sure we've all felt this way. Like we're just not good enough or smart enough or cool enough or just plain enough. Unfortunately, I think that's a pretty relatable feeling because big or small, we all probably have reasons to not feel like we're enough. Maybe some of us feel like this because of things we've done. We've messed up, we've made mistakes. We've done things that we're not proud of. Maybe you cheated on a test or lied to your parents or spread rumors about uh, that new girl or called kids at school a name you knew was offensive. Maybe you thought about trying drugs or alcohol and snuck out to go do that and party. Or maybe you gave into some pressures with your boyfriends or your girlfriends and you took things a little further than you wanted to. And while some people in your life may know about some of these things that you're struggling with, there are other things that no one knows about, right? Things that you've done that you've hidden because you don't want others to see you the way that you see yourself. You don't want them to know that you're not good enough. Or maybe you struggled with this feeling in a different way. Some of us feel like we're not enough because we haven't done enough. Maybe you feel like you're not a good enough daughter or son or athlete or musician or friend or sibling or student. Why? Because even though you're working so hard to be good at all those things, you still feel like somehow you aren't doing enough. You're still not good enough for your friends or your coach or your parents or maybe even Jesus. When it comes to faith, you feel like you haven't prayed enough or read your Bible enough or shown up to church enough or done enough right things to be good enough for Jesus. See what I mean? Whether it's because of what we've done or haven't done, we all have reasons to feel like we're not enough. And that feeling can leave us with a lot of questions. Will my friends still be my friends if they find out what I've done? Will my family understand why this has happened? Will the people in my small group think of me the same way? Will my coach ever think I'm, I'm good enough to start in the big game? Will my teacher ever give me that grade that I've been trying to earn? And what about Jesus? You may wonder, does he still love me? Even if I've messed up or I haven't prayed enough or I haven't made enough good choices, can I really be forgiven for what I've done? Can Jesus love and forgive me for not being enough, for not doing enough? If you're struggling with questions like these, let me assure you that you're not alone. And the story we're gonna dive back into today is one that will help us see exactly how Jesus feels about us, no matter how we feel about ourselves. Today, we're going to look again at a moment in the life of a guy named Zacchaeus. And like us, I think he was struggling with a similar feeling. You see, Zacchaeus, remember, he was a tax collector. And back then, tax collectors were generally hated because they were stealing from people to become rich themselves. So that meant that Zacchaeus had a bit of a reputation. Because of the things he'd done, others around him definitely didn't see him as good enough. But on this particular day in Zacchaeus' life, things changed. Because on this day, Jesus was coming to town. And like most people back then, Zacchaeus had heard about Jesus. He knew of all the cool and amazing things Jesus had done, and he wanted to get a chance to get close to Jesus. So Zacchaeus went down to where the crowds had gathered, and since he was short, he climbed a tree to get a better look. Now, I can't know for sure, but I have to wonder if Zacchaeus climbed that tree, not only because of his height, but also because he knew what other people thought of him. 
Maybe he thought that with all his mistakes and mess ups, the crowd would think that he wasn't good enough to get close to Jesus. Maybe he felt like he wouldn't be welcomed there. Well, what I do know is that when Jesus did notice Zacchaeus in that tree, he called him out. He went over to Zacchaeus. He called him by name. He asked to be a guest in his house that very day. Crazy and unexpected, right? We'll take a look at the way that people responded. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. So basically, the people around Zacchaeus said, there's no way this guy is good enough to have Jesus in his home. He's done so many bad things. Now keep in mind that there were the kind of people who felt like they definitely had done enough. They thought they'd done all the right things, that they were the people that Jesus should have looked at and chosen. And honestly, it would have been easy for Zacchaeus to feel like he wasn't good enough for this invitation either. I mean, he had a lot of reasons to think that. He had done a lot of wrong to a lot of people and probably even to a lot of people in that crowd. But Jesus knew all of that. He knew everything Zacchaeus had done and he still made it personal. Out of all the people in the crowd, Jesus chose Zacchaeus. And in that moment, Jesus did for Zacchaeus what he does for each one of us. He breaks a barrier. All that shame and that guilt and that regret and fear and mistakes that we think might separate us from Jesus actually have no power to keep us from him at all. Jesus walks right through them and chooses to make it personal with us. Why? Because he loves us. See, it's personal because Jesus loves you no matter what. And that means just as you are, you're enough. There's no mistake you can make that will separate you from his love. There's no choice that you need to make to earn his love. He loves you no matter what, and nothing you do or don't do will change that. It was true for Zacchaeus, and it's the same for you and for me. Jesus sees everything we've done and will ever do, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and he still chooses us. He still loves us. It's personal because Jesus loves you no matter what. So how do we start to believe this to be true? That we're enough? That Jesus loves us in a real and personal way just as we are? Maybe the best place to start is by naming it. Name what you feel is separating you from God. Maybe you're experiencing shame or guilt over something that you did wrong, like a bad choice or a mistake. Or maybe you messed up in a way that no one knows about, but you feel like it's keeping you from Jesus. Maybe for you, you feel like you haven't done enough of something and that's keeping you from Jesus. You haven't spent much time praying or reading the Bible or showing up at church and you feel like it's just getting between you and Jesus. Whatever it is, name it, confess it, call it out, identify what you feel is separating you from Jesus and tell him about it. Ask for his help in understanding and accepting his love for you just as you are. Pray that he will show you that nothing can separate you from his love. And then think about how you see or treat the people around you. Do you see them like they're not enough? Do you treat them like they don't deserve Jesus's love? Do you see kids at church and think, man, they don't belong here because look at what they've done. Ask Jesus to show you where you're not seeing others the way that he sees them and pray that he will help you change your heart. Remember what Jesus did for us it's the same thing that he does for others. He makes it personal. He loves no matter what, and he calls us to do the same. He asks us to make it personal for others by treating them with love and acceptance, no matter what. That could look like sitting with the new girl at lunch or inviting a quieter kid in your class to do something with you after school. Maybe it looks like showing kindness to someone who has hurt you in the past simply listening to a friend share about the mistakes that they've made. Whatever it is, take a step to make it personal for others by showing them love and acceptance no matter what. Because that's what Jesus did for us. Now remember, it's personal because Jesus loves you no matter what. And one reason why we have our small groups now on Zoom uh, is to reflect Jesus's love. Your small group loves and accepts you for who you are, no matter what. It's a safe place where you can get personal with others who trust and care about you. At least that's what we hope them to be. We know we're not perfect, but we try. So as you get into your small groups uh, throughout the weeks, I want you to think about this question. Do I really believe that God loves me no matter what? That's all for this week. Have a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you after Turkey Day. Peace.